Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's Verdier back again. Uh, as you can see, my eyes are all bloodshot, and I've got the crazy hair going. Uh, I'm now working overnights, uh, so my hours are all screwed up, and trying to get videos made is going to get be a little harder and harder. Plus, trying to get myself saying things correctly is going to be harder. <clears throat> Last we spoke concerning the system, my uh, stereo system, I had blown the front tweeters of the, uh, of the front... Um, Kicker, sp kicker speaker tweeters. Um, I then decided that I'm going to have to move to real speakers. <laughs> Some serious speakers. Uh, speakers that can handle serious po uh, power outputs and so forth. Uh, we were rather surprised uh, by the loss of the uh, kicker tweeters. But um, I'm going to show you how this install went. Uh, done by Adam. And, uh, and I'm going to get you some pitfalls and some knowledge on what goes on uh, with this particular kind of install and, about, and a little bit more information about these speakers. Uh, of course, my uh, allergies are acting up automatically, but then again, that's par for the course, right? Okay. Uh, but as we start, you know, as I, as I start, uh, when I first start with here, uh, you know, basically, this is Adam's domain right here. And uh, just wanted to show you basically how we're starting off. Uh, this is uh, my front door. This is the first door to be done. Obviously, we've already taken off the um, uh, the controls for the... Uh, oh, God. Here we go again with this aphasia. The controls uh, for the um, windows and so forth, uh, everything taken out. Pretty much there's only one screw involved. I've shown this in other videos and so forth. That's why this is kind of a repeat video. But this is just a door panel uh, before taking off. Uh, after that, I'm going to show you what it looks like. We now have the front door panel co totally off uh, and with the speakers out. Now, what I like to point out in this particular video here uh, is to keep in mind with my particular car, uh, the front left speaker <laughs> was wired out of phase by uh, Honda. Oh, that's Adam there, right there. You know, you'll see a big, big guy there. That's Adam. Uh, but the front speaker was wired out of phase uh, by Honda. So, you know, it's something you've got to keep in mind that when you're dealing with these speakers, you're installing into the Hondas, the tweeters are probably going to be out of phase. Uh, and if you're putting in silk dome tweeters as opposed to titanium tweeters, you want them uh, <laughs> crossed over back into in phase. But you need to check that and you need to have a professional check it unless you have uh, some kind of um, product that can take care of it. One other thing that's very important to show, and I'm going to try to freeze this down for you, uh, is in this video, you'll see these are the rings inside the front doors. Uh, the front doors have little rings that stick out uh, towards the speaker. What's very important to see is you'll see that they're bent. They are bent uh, because they're used to a particular size of speaker, and everything's very tightly put together in there. So you got to keep in mind, these were pushing against the speaker and bending, uh, which was, of course, influencing the sound of the speaker and obviously can cause rattles and so forth. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to take a Dremel to this and you're going to want to Dremel that ring out completely. Uh, it, it's just a little piece of plastic. You cut down into it and Dremel around it and it'll come out and you'll never need it anymore. It's not really all that important. It's just part of the design of the door. Uh, but the last thing you want it doing is pushing against any of your speakers uh, and rattling. Uh, so I wanted to let you guys know about that. Uh, next video here, I'm going to show you the size differential between this Hertz 6.5 and, and the 6.5 inch tweeter by Kick, uh, 6.5 driver by Kicker. Look at the difference there. The Hertz is really huge in comparison. It takes up a lot more surface space versus the Kicker, which has more of an edge uh, and more of a rubber seal. No comparison between the two. A nice interesting aspect of the Hertz is it doesn't have a, uh, a dust cover in the center, which I find very fascinating for the design of the speaker. Next, I want to show you the difference between the uh, Kicker and the Hertz tweeter. Now, this video doesn't really show it well, but the Hertz tweeter, the actual surface space of the actual tweeter itself, the dome, is a lot larger. Uh, there's a little bit more involved to it. Um, Weight-wise, they're about the same. I mean, they're just tweeters. Uh, but this puppy right here... He was uh, pretty big, and I just wanted to show you the difference between the two. Next, what I'm going to show you is the tweeter is installed. It installs very nicely. The Hertz tweeter fits perfectly fine in there. Uh, minimal changes needed to be done. 
I think a little bit of glue had to be put in there mostly, you know, like hot glue or something like that. But that basically fits perfectly fine. So there's your Hertz tweeter installed um, along with Adam's uh, furry head. So I'll show you the video of the driver installed. You see there's a lot of dynamatting around it or ballistic matting. Uh, we did that to make sure everything was sealed. Apparently, um, my friend who helped me out didn't get it completely fully sealed. So it's very important to get a very good seal. Otherwise, you can lose sound quality from your speaker. So we really smushed it up around there. Uh, one other thing you need to watch out on some of these uh uh, install kits that come with uh, from Metra, the rings themselves sometimes have little plastic nubs on the back, uh, and then they can push against the door and they can break the seal, basically leading to a little bit of space between the ring, uh, your mounting ring, and the speaker. Uh, you might want to shave those uh, nubs off. I don't have a picture of that, but I just wanted to give you a forewarning on that uh, afterward. You know, just so you you know you see it and you can deal with it. Next, you can see here, both speakers installed on the left door. The tweeter is installed and the driver is installed. Everything looks nice, uh, as I said, with the heavy-duty dynamatting done in order to make sure everything uh, was put on um, properly. Uh, just wanted to, you know, just make sure the seal is good. Adam's very touchy about that kind of stuff. You know, this wasn't a cheap install. Uh, it's not that he was overly, it was a little overpriced, yes, uh, but the speakers are very expensive. Uh, and he really wanted the quality to really shine. So we let this speaker really uh, really go here. Uh, and it really looks great. Uh, and it's huge. I mean, it's really huge in comparison to the kicker. And you'll notice that in the uh, sound quality uh, later on uh, as well. Uh, now, basically, well, uh, showing, he, he likes to take the back seat out. I wish I would have shown the back seat being taken out, but it just seemed kind of superfluous to deal with uh, and to go too far into it. I have shown the disassembly of the back before, but basically, there really isn't much to it. Uh, as you can see, uh, you, you take the side, uh, you take the bottom panels down off. Uh, you don't really need to seat, take the seat out. It just makes it easier, but if you see right there, I kind of aimed it wrong uh, in the video. Uh, but I'll get it right. I'm aimed in the wrong spot here. But as I go around uh, to the other side of the uh, car, see the bottom panel's down, and then you'll see there's a single screw right there, 10 millimeter bolt, uh, comes out, takes that corner off. And here you'll see Adam, he's taking the bottom part off. Uh, I, and of course, you know, I don't make it easy for you to see. Why would I do that? I did some terrible filming in here, and I do apologize for that. But I just want to give you a good look at it. Uh, and then, of course, the side panel comes off. Uh, and, you know, here I am jumping all over the place. I don't know why I keep doing this. Uh, but I keep jumping back and forth to different areas uh, while he pulls different panels and parts off. Uh, the install took uh, a couple of hours. It, it wasn't a heavy-duty, uh, hard install. It may have been done before. Here we're showing how the panels just pop right off. They are all actually just uh, stuck together um, with pins. Uh, and the whole thing can come out as a single piece, although they do come into multiple pieces. Uh, when reinstalling, it's best to put the pieces back together again uh, and then try to pop it back in. Here's the other side being pulled out also as well. Uh, that last pin all the way in the end, I believe, is a metal pin. Technically, <laughs> when you take it out, that's supposed to be the end of that pin is what he told me. But you're able to reuse it. You just got to be a little careful when you take it out. Uh, so here, basically, we have all the parts out, and basically all we have left is the main deck itself, uh, which we'll have to pull out. Uh, it looks like a big job, and it is to some extent a big job. Uh, and if you don't know what you're doing, uh, it could be a little touch and go. But it's not all that hard. You just got to make sure that you have extra pins uh, and extra uh, connectors uh, to make it uh, go back in a little bit better. Uh, here are my door panels on the ground. I, I don't know why I'm filming these. It's kind of ridiculous. And why I'm why I'm doing it like this, I really don't know. I probably should just uh, kind of edit this crap out, but whatever. <laughs> Next, I'm going to show the actual rear deck being pulled out. Here he is. He's got his hands underneath. Uh, basically, uh, if I remember correctly, there, there are bolts there. I believe there are two bolts, one on each side. 
Uh, they're really easy to see. Uh, and basically, you just stick your hand way down in the back and you just pop it up. Not all that hard. Uh, again, just a lot of popping of a lot of clips, and you just got to be careful you don't b break anything. And of course, uh, pulling in seat belts out from the little slots that are there for the seat belts, uh, seat belt guides uh, to be in. Uh, very, very. Um, well, that's also very important to make sure that that's done correctly. But as like I said, the deck install, uh, deck uh, removal is not as bad as you would think, seem to think it is, uh, but it is a lot of work. Um, and, you know, it, 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 it is what it is. Now, I've shown this all before, and, and I'm sorry to be boring you. I just thought you'd like to see the install of the new speakers and uh, how they're done. Um, I don't know what he's doing here. It's been a while. But basically, it's just a rear deck uh, pullout. And remember, it's just a bunch of clips. So you do got to be careful. You do need to go underneath and pop up with your hand in order to make sure that you don't break uh, all those clips. Uh, I do suggest you uh, purchase clips on Amazon if you can. Um, ah, Here's something very important. That's a seatbelt. Me and my friend broke that seatbelt. Here's something many of you may not know. You saw that bolt up top. Now let's pretend the seatbelt's already plugged in all the way down to the bottom and connected to the bottom. If you undo the bolt at the top there, then the seatbelt will start raveling down. It'll start sucking itself down and you can't get it back up without taking it apart and redoing, uh, undoing the ball bearing. So you need to be very careful. If you want to like undo this bolt a little and maybe stick some padding or something for quiet things down or whatever, if you have any noise or anything going on in there, you need to make sure you get yourself like a good clip uh, to put right there at the seatbelt. That way when it does come undone, uh, once you take it out, it doesn't start raveling down to the bottom. Otherwise, you're going to have a heck of a time putting it back together. I had to get a new seatbelt because when we took it apart, <laughs> holy moly, was it a bitch to put back together. And we couldn't get it back together. And there were teeny tiny parts in there that broke off. And I just had to buy a new seatbelt. So very important with the seatbelts if you got to deal with that. Next video is just the deck. Fully, uh, boy, it looks awful, doesn't it? There's a lot of matting on there. Uh, that, that little handle you may have saw over there on the uh, right side, that's the emergency trunk release, uh, just in case <laughs> you screw up and lock things up or, or you lose power and you gotta, you got to undo your trunk. And those are the old tweeters, all covered in uh, dynamatting. Next, I'm going to show you the preview of what I decided to put in the rear. Now, I decided in order to save money to put coaxials in the rear. Uh, these are also Hertz. Uh, they're not the Legends. I believe they're called the Mill Pros. Uh, these are excellent speakers. And quite frankly, unless you have people sitting in the back and you need them to hear every single detail, it doesn't make much sense to put separate uh, components in the rears. It just doesn't make any real sense. Uh, it costs more money. The sound isn't going to be any real different, especially when it comes to the front people in the front. Uh, basically, rear speakers are used mostly to fill the sound, to do a complete fill of the sound. Uh, and he ended up, in order to use uh, eight channels on ten channels, he ended up linking the tweeters all together and then doing the time alignment of the uh, of the tweeters. So uh, these coaxes actually sound very good. They're about 200 watts. Um, and, and they put out plenty of sound, and I heard no sound degradation from going from components in the rear to uh, coax. I recommend just doing the coax and saving yourself the money. Next, I'll show you what the coaxes look like installed. Uh, what's nice about these coaxes is that their tweeters do not stand up, so you're not going to have any problem with anything uh, blocking the deck from going back down. That's a big problem you can run into. Uh, with some of these other ones that have coax, uh, that have tweeters that pop up. So if you do decide you want to go coax on the rear, rear, make sure that the tweeters in the center are low, uh, no higher than the speaker's uh, uh, rim itself. Otherwise, they will interfere with the uh, deck, and you won't be able to put the deck uh, back down. And here's just a, another quick view of what it looks from the back with the, with the top off. Uh, the speakers installed. Uh, I don't know why I filmed this. I guess just uh, as filler, and I do apologize. Some of this is just kind of stupid, but I want to give you a general idea of what it looked like. And this is also kind of a silly thing. This is Adam starting his tuning of the system with his laptop, trying to make it sound as good as possible. These speakers are very bright, 
and very wonderful. And I've, I've, I've kind of messed them up by having them uh, cut down the brightness a little bit. And I'm going to have them put them back up. Because even though they get a little strong, even for my ears, uh, they're better brighter. And these things can handle a lot of sound. The fronts are the Mill Legends. And they can handle 130 watts RMS. That's constant power with no problem. And no rattling, no nothing. So that's something to keep in mind. Uh, fantastic. Um, and let's see. And the last, before we put in the doors, we did a little extra dynamating on the doors uh, to try to get rid of some rattles that I thought were in the doors. It didn't work. <laughs> There's still some rattles in that door, especially the front driver's side door. It sounds to me like it's coming from the pillar behind me where the seatbelt is. I don't think it is. I think it's actually the door because if you push against the door, it'll stop. I think it might actually be the actual pins, in which case I might put some felt behind each of the pins later on uh, at some point. Uh, but it was worth a try. Yes? No, you think so? Okay. Basically, well, uh, just one more video. I'll just show it here real quick. There, there's the door with the speakers installed. You see the Hertz, it fits very nicely in there. Says the big Hertz thing. Yes, the door is filthy. So sue me. Uh, everything sound, uh, everything fit perfectly fine. There was no problem with the fit and finish and so forth. I do apologize for the length of this video. Uh, but I just want to make sure uh, I, I got everything up so you can see the full install of these speakers. All right, now we're going to get into what I ended up putting in it and was it worth it for the money. In a word, these speakers are absolutely unbefucking leaveable. The kicker speakers cost the average person about $400, $450 for a pair. I think you can get the front ones that I have in this, the front pair of these speakers. These, they're called the, uh, the Hertz Mill Legends. Uh, I will put up some information on the screen here at some point. For about $750, that's a lot of money for speakers. Do you hear, you know, there's always this talk about diminishing returns. Is there a difference between the kicker and the Hertz that's worth that money? Every single penny. Now these, and these are not even the best of their Hertz. These are the best in this line of the Hertz. Uh, Audison, which is the same, it, it's a giant company, uh, makes all of these speakers. Audison makes speakers like these also that are more for the audiophile. Me, I need incredibly good sound, but I need a good, very loud volume. Volume is very important for me to enjoy my music. And these speakers give you an incredible crystal clear highs, uh, very good lows. Uh, some people even comment on the internet that the mids aren't good. Uh, they're out of their line. They're out of their minds and that their lows are, are kind of nothing. Bullshit. Uh, these speakers are fantastic. They're incredible and I cannot recommend them too much. If you're going to spend money on your front speakers, you can do the fronts. 750 the rears 235 dollars i think i saw them online 250 bucks worth every single penny sorry i thought i heard uh, the the lady at the house yelling at the dogs downstairs uh <laughs> um between the two, you're, you're costing about $1,000 in speakers. But if you want good quality, loud sound, and I mean really good quality, these speakers are fantastic. When I first played them, you know, he, he told me, oh, you're going to hear a big difference. I sat down, I played them. I literally, my eyes got all teary and I almost started crying. I, I've needed a good stereo in this car for a long time. And along with the Audison amp and the audio uh, control amp for the sub, uh, I have an incredible sound system in this car, and now I love playing my music, and I love driving this car again. It, it became impossible to play my music in this car. So we're talking about the Hertz Legend, and, the, and I believe the rear are the Coaxial Hertz Pros. Uh, again, I'll put that information on here as well. Both pairs of speakers are worth every single penny. You do not need uh, components in the rear. You don't need them. I'm telling you guys, you don't need them. If you oh, I got to have them, I got to have them. If you got people sitting in the rear and you really need them to hear every single little tweet and so forth, then fine. Put the components in the rear. But you don't need them. You really don't need them. 
if you're like me, and most of the music is most important for the front passengers, especially the driver, and especially if you plan on uh, time aligning it to the front. With me time aligning in front, that pretty much makes... I mean, I've sat in the passenger seat, and it sounds great there, too. But, of course, the center is a little off. It's because it's centered towards the driver's side. You don't need components in the rear. And it makes it easier for the hookup into the amplifiers. Uh, so, is it worth every penny? Yes. Yes, it's worth every penny. Um, the Audison uh, amplifier, I had the Forza model because I wanted the 85 watts per channel to give me all that extra v volume. And I had the audio control, uh, I think it's called the ACM 1.300 uh, to push my subwoofer. And it's basically eight channels in, nine channels out with a DSP on the Audison. Uh, yes, eight, eight, ten. He's got one of those channels running for the center, which is still that kicker that I put in a long time ago. He says, it's not a problem. We can run the kicker in there uh, because it can handle enough wattage to, ha to handle the sound. And because he's not pushing too much through the center, uh, you can get a Audison system uh, amplifier for about $700 that only pushes about 35 watts per channel. That's more than enough power. Uh, what you have in that car right now, that's about what you have, you know, 35 watts per channel at eight, at eight channels uh, you know, that that's more than enough power for the vast majority of you. For people like me who need incredible volume, need to play the music at very high volumes, and I do, um, then you would go with a Forza, which would put you up into the $1,300 range, which is a tremendous amount of money. But you got to remember, you're getting a full DSP, uh, and you're getting eight channels in, nine channels out. Uh, that's a lot, and a lot of power. Uh, a lot of power. That's a lot of power in an amp that's relatively small. It's really tiny. The only thing you'll need is a sub amp. Uh, I use the audio control, which I like. I think I think it pushes out enough power. I only run it at uh, at four ohms, which is 175 watts. It shakes the hell out of the car when it needs to. But I don't like my subwoofers changing people's heartbeats. If you need to change people's heart heartbeats, then by all means get yourself one of those 1,000 uh, watt uh, mega blocks, which push what maybe really 400 watts RMS. Because remember. 1,000-watt peaks don't mean shit. Uh, it's the RMS that really makes the big difference. Uh, so it uh, it's fantastic, guys. This system sounds fantastic. So this is Verdier out. This is what the system is now. I've got the, uh, I've got the uh, Mill Legends up front by Hertz. The uh, Mill Pros in the rear, coaxials. Uh, I'm using the Audison, uh, Forza, 8.9 bit amp uh, and the audio control I believe it's the ACM 1.300 if I have it wrong I'll put it up there and that pushes uh, oh and the, and the sub is just a, an old sub box I got at Best Buy a long time ago uh, with a Rockford Fosgate 12 inch sub fantastic fantastic uh, I am happy with this system and I consider the stereo system except for some minor tuning which I'm going to work with uh, Adam on uh, done and over. This is Verdier signing out.